Tell them, tell them how it tastes. Mm. Tastes good. Yeah. Tastes very like. Yeah. You can taste the alcoholic. It's been fermenting. Uh, it's it's like water. But it's a little thick. Yeah. It's uh, as you can see, it's murky. <laughs> Hey, what's up everyone? This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here, coming at you from Balamu, Suriname, super interior of the country. Right here is the Tapanahoni River. As you can see, beautiful rainforest behind us. And if you guys didn't know, 80% of Suriname is untouched rainforest. It is gorgeous flora and fauna. And right here we have the resort. So it's five big bungalows. Each one is divided in two, so you have 1A and B, 2A, B, and it accommodates 20 people. My room, is very simple as you can see. Wooden room, you have two beds, twin beds, you have mosquito nets. Next to that, you have a little desk. We have a closet, bathroom, and I have a charging area. Thank God, because I always need electricity. I need to charge my batteries. And then right here, we have like a little hammock area, like a dock with like five hammocks. And over here, we have the docks, right? And that's where you get on the boat every single day. You get on the boat, go down the river, and go explore the rainforest. And so for the past 24 hours, I've been exploring. I went on a few jungle treks. I saw some of the rapids, ate some delicious food. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go have some lunch and then we're gonna explore the village because the village is right next to us. So it's the village and the resort and that's it. And then after that, we're gonna go on a plane all the way back to the capital of Paramaribo. So for lunch, we're having some delicious roti. We're having some pumpkin mash. We're having some aloo, some potatoes, right? and some chicken whoa this is it chili chili oh this looks amazing oh my god Enjoy your meal. that's insane <laughs> thanks man so get in here get a piece of roti go in here and grab some of the potato right here some mash delicious roti pumpkin delicious mm. a little pumpkin a little sweet mm. oh yeah over here we have the chicken. Break off some chicken. What I have to do is I break it off, leave it there, break off some more, right? Well, this one's a little hard. The chicken in the center, man. It's unreal. How fresh this is. So tasty, so juicy. Mm. So simple, but at the same time, freaking good. Mm. Get some chicken with the roti. The real good that. If you guys didn't know, I'm a pro with this stuff. Roading. I do it every day. Bring out some more of this. Get some chicken. And here's the roti with some delicious chicken. But I also put some super spicy like chili on top. Mm. That's really spicy. Super spicy. Oh, but I'll get some more. Get some more of the chicken, break it up, put it with some of the pepper. Oh, it's good, man. I love the influence from India. No? Yeah, it's nice uh, dishes so they have. Yeah, yeah, yeah amazing dishes. Stuff. Yeah, it's, it's really just having the, those delicious sauces changes everything. Because if not, this mm -hmm. would be so bland. So this is um, real Suriname because Suriname is a real mixture of um, all the um, ethnic groups that we have in Suriname. Mm -hmm. And you mix the potato mash with the chicken. For being so simple, it's so delicious. You know, grab some more. This time, grab the chicken. And over here at the very top, we have some of the peppers right there. Why not? Oh, that's spicy. Because I love the peppers or the chili so much, I'm gonna put some more here, right there. This time, just go in, get as much chicken as possible, right there. That, get a lot of chilies. I'm a huge fan of Indian food. Chili is intense. It's clear my sinuses. Oh, wow. Best thing to do is probably mix these two together, right? Yep. Pumpkin, mix it with some of this. I'm a big mixer, you know? I like mixing my food. And that's the great part about coming to these like resorts in the middle of nowhere. The food's always outstanding because it's super fresh ingredients. Everything comes like from right here. I love the pumpkin. Mm. 
That was like pure pumpkin, right? Pure. Pure. So for lunch and dinner, they have this dining hall. Right here, they have a huge table, you know, for big groups. And in the back, there's some hammocks, there's other tables, relaxing area, and also a bar. To finish off my lunch, I'm having some coffee. Oh, really strong, really strong. All right, I'm good. Let's go to the village. Oh, man, you're okay, buddy. The brain cappuccino. Totally Just the village is literally right next to the resort. And next to it, we also have the airstrip. That is the airstrip right there. The only way to get here is by plane. By plane. No other way. <laughs> you can boat, but it take a um, couple days. Couple days, right? Yes, like 12 days. What? From Albina by the border with French Guiana, and then you go up to the river upstream, and then you hit into the Tapanahoni River. Yeah. Yeah, I just saw the map there. I saw how it works. If I would have gone, if today we went one hour. If we would have gone another like day or two, we would have made it to French Guiana, right? Yeah. So we have these two bridges that basically it's for whenever it rains, right? So you need these bridges. Wow. Oh, here we are, we're approaching the village. You can see lots of houses on stilts. This one's on stilts. On the bottom is like their terrace and top is their house. But that's also because the rain, right? Because the rain, they have to have their house on stilts. We are um, in the village, Palemu, and uh, this is the church that they visit, the Baptist church. And um, in fact, many of the people are Baptist um, convented. Yeah. And um, they are preparing now for a conference in September. And this is the style of living. At the moment, we don't see nobody because everyone is now like um, doing their own thing, maybe in the fields or somewhere making woods in the jungle. And uh, we are just going around and see how um, the houses are built. And uh, yeah, so the houses are all on stilts, still, and yeah, this is because yeah. of the rain, right? Because Mainly. Of the rain. Okay. Yeah. There's, so there's not that many. I mean, there's easily like a dozen or two dozen houses yeah. here. Everybody's in the shade. Mm -hmm. No one's in the sun like us. Like we're yeah. crazy. <laughs> Uh, this is the um, village house and it calls in the Amerinya language Tukuspang or Paimang and it is where they do the meetings and celebrating uh, feasting birthdays and those things and uh, if there are some visitors and there is no room by the family they can also sleep in hammocks here around communal hall slash sleeping in case there's an overflow in, yes. in our house and this is the model of the Wayana tribes Amerinian you would think it's crazy that my guides have hoodies on. Actually, they're smart. They're covering up their necks and their arms. I'm the one that's like burning my arms right now. <laughs> no, you guys are really smart. I'm sure it's hot in there, but it's better to be hot than, and not to burn, you know? My guy Julius was telling me that the reason why the village is along the river is mainly because everything is done along the river. You know, they go fishing in the river, they bathe in the river, they wash their clothes in the river. So they always want to be near the river. They don't want to be too far inland because then they would have to walk far just to get to the river. And that's basically their source of life is this beautiful river. Yes, but um, the lifestyle of the Amarina is the, also the, uh, or the, um is uh, uh, in contrast with the maroon because the maroon are mostly inland not directly on the water they are always like um, protecting you don't see really the villages you have to go in then you can see that uh, we have the co-influence right here um, of the Palami river which uh, you uh, have to head it head on to go to Kasi Kasima and then the upper Tapanahoni river all, both of them are going to the south and the, the spring is from the mountain in the south. Okay, so I was asking them if they had anything for sale and they basically brought out a mini market here. They put it down here, they have yeah. flute, they have like some maraca, they have a little knife. What is that? It's like a, an arrow? Is that an arrow? It's wow. a, um, a mini... Um, a mini arrow? Mini and then lots of bracelets, necklaces. <laughs> so they also have the pen flute. <laughs> Pretty cool. And then that one's 50, not that bad. And this is like, this, this is like a dagger, like a little sword. <laughs> Pretty cool though. I think I was gonna get myself uh, maybe a bracelet or two for my kids. Um, I, I actually like the piranha, the piranha jaw. It's really interesting, but I don't know. I can't really take it to America. That'll be weird, right? After going through their mini craft market, I bought two bracelets, one for each of my daughters 
definitely think it's worth it. It's made out of basically like small like seeds and leaves, right? That's all it is. Like seeds and leaves that have been put together into this bracelet. And yeah, now we're gonna go over here to this section. So a lot of people, they don't want me to film, but they want me to try a local beer, the Magnot, Magnot. Tell them, tell them how it tastes. Mm. Tastes good. Yeah. Tastes very like, yeah. you can taste the alcoholic, it's been fermenting. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's like water, but it's a little thick. Yeah. It's, uh, as you can see, it's murky. <laughs> Not murky, cloudy. Oh man, it's strong. Yeah. And so I can have the whole thing. Yes, you can you can finish it. Up to you. H how much alcohol is in here? A lot? Uh, 3 to 5%. 3 to 5%? Yeah. Oh, I can do like 10 of these. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is nice though. Mm, I like the cloudy taste to it. Yeah. Almost like a, a super, it's super earthy beer. Yes, that's it really. Ooh, <laughs> it was so good. We got a second round. It's really refreshing, especially in this heat. Oh, cheers, my friend. How do we say cheers? Yeah. How do you say cheers in your language? Not prost. Kurekeniten. Kurekeniten. You guys are all gulping it down. Wow, that was some good beer. Super refreshing. Cooled me down. Basically, I had like one beer. Awesome. Yeah, that's the best part about being next to the river is you get that breeze, you know? Whew, that beer was really good. So earthy, so like it was almost like a milky. It was almost like a milk that came out of a tree. Yeah, you know that's what I feel like. Mm. Not that much alcohol. It's pretty good. And yeah, yeah basically. But if you drink uh, too too much, you will yeah. be drunk. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. Yeah. And so yeah, we explored the village. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the resort, grab my bags, and wait for the plane. We have a flight in 50 minutes. Charter flights, always fun. Okay, now we are heading back to the resort of the Mets and uh, on our way we have then the school just after um, five minutes from the village. School is literally next to the airstrip and where we're staying on right now, this is the old airstrip back in 1950s you said, right? And there's only seven airstrips in the entire interior. Yeah. Wow. That's it, huh? But uh, in, in the entire inter, they made this, with, they started with the seven, but today they have more than 100. Okay, okay. Yes. I was gonna say, yeah, because I know there's like 30 or 40 resorts like this all over the interior, so 100 different airstrips. And that's it, we explored the village, saw the parrot, tried some beer, now we're getting to the resort, and I quickly have to pack up. I have literally 20 minutes before my flight takes off. It's gonna be here right now. Let's hurry up. And here we go, this is my plane. We're leaving in three minutes. They're just offloading everything. Wow, they brought a lot of stuff. Hey, David, pleasure. So it's just you and me? Yes. That's it. And uh, also to Lucas, I think. Oh yeah? Am I with you in the front? <laughs> yes, you can sit in the front. I can sit in the front? That's amazing. Oh my God. This is gonna be, <laughs> this is what we're going up in, guys. What? This is so sick. Private, but private tiny. Oh my God. I'm nervous. I don't love these planes. They're too tiny, too tiny. No, I'll sit in the front. So all the way in the back? Like in this side? Oh my God. This is tight. Yeah, you're okay? I'm okay. I'm okay. This is gonna be a, a thrilling ride. Fortunately, I have a kid that's not feeling good behind me. Is he okay? He's okay? You're okay, you're okay, you're okay. Don't worry, I'm here with you. I'm here.
so smooth. What a great pilot. <laughs> you did an awesome job, dude. I was nervous half the time because there was a few instances where a lot of uh, a lot of clouds, and we just felt it, like in the middle of the cloud. But overall, great experience. Only a one hour and 10 minute flight. Went straight over the entire country, all the way to the north to Paramaribo. All right, what a flight. What a flight. There's no other way to get down there, so you have to take a charter no matter what. And uh, it's not that bad. I mean, it's a little scary. Obviously, a little bit of uh, turbulence got me a little, a little freaked out, dude. <laughs> but, uh, but everything's good, thank God. Uh, you know, we made it. Only one hour flight, one hour and 10 minutes. And now we're gonna go to a hotel, tour. Yes, yes. What's up, man? Pleasure. We're, go we're going to Tororica? Yes, for sure. Perfect, awesome, let's go. <laughs> Great. And this is Paramaribo. If you guys didn't know about Paramaribo, this is the largest city. It's the capital city of Suriname. Half of the population of the country lives here. First language is Dutch, then it's the Tongoli, and like there's like so many other languages. Huge myths huge mix of ethnicities here you got the locals you have the dutch you have the africans the indians the chinese the indonesians i mean really 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 mixed in terms of ethnicities a lot of different cultures what i love about it is the food's like out of control i think tonight I probably can go eat some indian food or probably some indonesian food or something but yeah, I mean, really an incredible place. Uh, very small capital. Uh, I really think you, all you need is two days. So when you do come to Suriname, two days here is enough. You can do it all in terms of seeing all the major stuff, all the attractions. And I mean, if you really want to go all out foodie wise, uh, I suggest three, four days. There's a lot of things to eat here. And uh, and yeah, here's the hotel. Let's get there. Hey, thank you. Have a great thank day, you. Yeah? Nice to meet you. Thank you. You yeah. too. All right, so I just checked into the Royal Tororica, one of the best hotels in Paramaribo, and I'm staying in 4310, going up right now. Check this out. Huge lobby, like super high ceilings, easily like five stories. Whoa, super luxurious. This is like nothing compared to places I've been staying on this trip. I mean, this is like nice, modern, sleek, I love this, this white, the white here is so beautiful. Very high ceilings. Got a super, super sick king size bed. Beautiful king size bed. I love the furniture. Look at this nice couch right here. Pretty cool table. Have a beautiful flat screen TV right here. Some more closet space here. Oh, okay, coffee right there. Probably the mini bar right here. Mini bar, yes. And let's see the bathroom. Let's see. Hotel Royal Tororica. Super luxurious. Whoa, look at this. Man, I feel like I'm in a boutique hotel right now. This is really, really boutique. You got your nice marble, shower, toilet. This is amazing. I'm really, really happy that I'm staying here the next two nights. This is just incredible. Check this out. This is like real five-star hotel. We had such an amazing day today. We started off with delicious jungle lunch, roti slash pumpkin, what else? Chilies, chicken, delicious lunch. Very mixed with ethnicities there. You know, you have the native food, but then they bring in that roti, the Indian twist, and they bring in some of the peanut that, that's like Indonesian, very delicious lunch. Then after that, we went over to the village, walked around the village, bought a few braces for my daughters. I also tried some like local beer, very, very earthy. Not my favorite, but it will do the job for sure. It's a nice beer. Then we flew, we took a charter flight, one hour straight north to Paramaribo. That was really intense. I mean, beautiful, beautiful way to see the country, you know, being there with the pilot in the front, seeing everything, seeing the, the clouds as they come by, and you know you're gonna hit like some pockets, some, you know, some turbulence there, and getting ready for it. I mean, just a whole different experience. It's like the third time I've flown with the pilot, every other time, always in the back, and you can't even see the pilot. That was just epic, epic experience. Then we made it here to Paramaribo, and came here to the Royal Tororica, Royal Tororica. The luxury, luxury, luxury of luxury hotels here in Paramaribo. I mean, look at this room. What else can I tell you? This room is ridiculous. I can't wait to jump in bed. Well, guys, if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up. Let me comment below. Subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Suriname. Peace. Oh.